beautiful. You're so kind. And so are you, my beautiful friend. If you look at the details of the beautiful flowers, how could anybody say there's no design? Because he knew that the beauty around the earth points to a designer and a creator. Named God? I read that the beautiful colors of a peacock's tail feather made Charles Darwin sick. What? Made Charles Darwin sick. What? How did that make Darwin sick? That's right, bro. Darwin's lie cannot explain how we all evolved. In Romans 120, for ever since the world was created, people have seen God's beauty, his divine nature, and power. So they have no excuse for not believing in him. Watch the rest of our Evolution is a Lie podcast. And discover how God created heavens and earth's beauty at an act of divine love. There are at least 8 million different species of animals and plants. And for more than a century, the go-to explanation for their incredible diversity has been the theory of natural selection. Charles Darwin's hypothesis of gradual, undirected biological change has had enormous influence on both science and philosophy. Yet can a purely materialistic process actually account not only for the stunning variety of living organisms, but also for their extravagant beauty. I think the place to start with natural selection and beauty is Darwin himself. He wrote once that every time he saw the tail of a peacock, it made him physically ill, sick to his stomach, because he's looking at something that goes well beyond what his theories, either of natural selection or sexual selection, can explain. To better understand Darwin's concerns about beauty, peacocks, and their threat to his theory, let's take a closer look at those feathers. You see the peacock's tail and you go, wow. It's a visual crescendo of symmetry, harmony, coordination among all the elements of the design. And the deeper you look, the more interesting it becomes. An adult male peacock has, on average, about 200 individual tail feathers. 170 of them feature a decorative eye spot, and 30 are crowned with a wing-shaped plume called a T. When displayed during courtship, the feathers form a magnificent fan, where every eye spot and T are uniformly spaced and geometrically balanced to create a showcase of pattern, symmetry, precision, and design. This bird is a living, breathing work of art. And when we move in close to the details, we see craftsmanship and planning and subtle engineering that's just utterly obvious. The shape of every eye spot is defined by rows of multicolored branching strands called barbs. Moving closer, we see that each barb contains thousands of barbules, microscopic filaments tightly compacted along a rigid shaft. And the surface of each barbule is segmented into crystal-like bands of molecular jewelry. These barbules are reflective so they glimmer and change color when struck by light from different angles. The total effect of all this decoration provides an excellent example of what is known as gratuitous beauty. That's beauty that goes way beyond what's needed to attract a mate or to provide some other survival advantage. In other words, you have features that look like they're there for no other reason than to be gorgeous, to be beautiful, to be breathtaking. In nature, gratuitous beauty is not limited to peacocks, for the animal and plant kingdoms are filled with striking visual displays that each evokes an obvious question. Is artistry of this magnitude 
actually possible through natural selection? A blind process devoid of foresight or purpose that theoretically constructed every detail in every organism through a series of biological accidents. Random errors in the genetic code. No, because randomness by definition is going nowhere in particular. So the method of explanation, the tools of explanation that, that natural selection gives us are far too crude for what they need to explain. Give me an example of chaos and chance producing beauty and I'll rethink it. But what I see chaos and chance producing is more chaos and chance. To better grasp the artistic limitations of natural selection, consider the planning, imagination, and skill required to create one of the most famous paintings in history, Michelangelo's mural on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Looking at the ceiling, you have a coherent story. There is a unifying thread of biblical themes that brings it all together. There are symmetries in the way that things have been painted and arranged. The use of the space, the way that figures stand at particular intervals in relation to each other. And you see exquisite brushwork over this enormous surface, just this overflow of artistic genius. It's the antithesis of randomness. In the Sistine Chapel, randomness would be a bucket of paint accidentally kicked over and splattered on a wall. Or a bunch of stains, right? Flaking paint, the ceiling's coming down. We gotta get Michelangelo in here to fix this mess. We have randomness and Michelangelo, and they are polar opposites. Similar principles hold true in nature. If the random genetic mutations so essential to natural selection have no eye for blending colors or ability to formulate elegant patterns and shapes, then there must be some other agent responsible for the glorious petals of a lily and the ornate decorations on a butterfly's wing. A designer whose works far exceed the constraints of Charles Darwin's survival of the fittest. What we see in beautiful systems are features that go beyond what's necessary for mere survival. So for me, ultimately, beauty points to design because in a biological context, beauty is an extra. It's an add-on. Beauty is there over and above what's needed just to make a go of it. Well, you start walking along that path and it doesn't take very long until you realize you come to grips with the reality that there was a transcendent mind that put this universe together as we find it. What we have right in front of us, right in front of us in the peacock, in tropical fish, in the eye of the eagle, in these exquisite designs that show not just engineering, but artistry, whimsy, humor, subtlety, all the features of a supreme intellect. And the final point, the one that really brings it home, is this idea of beauty, of a property that we perceive, that we understand, that we feel, that we respond to, that goes well beyond what living things need just to get by. That signal carries us beyond the world itself to a cause that's transcendent, to a cause that's divine. The world is designed. It's the only reasonable thing to infer from what we see. <laughs>